Welcome to Just the Two of Us Homestead. We are Colleen and Frank, and we live in the perfect size homestead just for us in southwestern Quebec. Gardening, growing food, and preserving is one of our passions. And our barn animals, we love them so much, they're just like pets. And we're so fortunate to be able to live our lives as we do, each and every day is a blessing. Hi everyone. Well, I thought it was time for a garden tour, even though the garden isn't really, to me, nice enough or perfect enough to show you. But I figured we're all family and friends and it's as good as it's gonna get for a while. So I wanted to show you it now because soon we'll be into July and I wanted to show you what it looked like now before it progresses, because then you can actually see the stages of growth. So I also brought along a little co-host today. I'm not sure if you can see him right now, but you'll see him going around. And in case anyone's worried that the landscape fabric is too hot for his little feet, it's not. I keep checking and it's not hot at all. I mean, there's no difference from this to the grass and he's got a nice big bowl of water. So he just follows me everywhere. I'll pick him up every once in a while. Everything in this garden, I grew from seed. I did all the starts in the house and everything else was sown by seed that's here. I do kind of three kinds of gardening. I do the raised beds, the in-ground with the woven weave fabric. I do roof stout and a few container gardening, grow bags or whatever. So let's get started. I may have to sit here and there, so sorry about that. But And I also don't walk with the camera very well, so it'll be a bit of a different tour, but I'm excited to show it to you just the same. Here he is. He's three weeks old and he's huge. Yes, he still lives in his brooder, but we bring him out more and more now. And he just clings like glue, and I love every second of it. Except I worry about tripping over him because he's really underfoot. Anyway, so you guys saw me plant the tower of lettuce. And we've been eating on it like crazy. It's cut and come again. I haven't attached attacked this row yet because it's still filling in. But we just eat and eat from it, and I love it. This one I just did, uh, it was called a Little Gem Romaine, and this was a type of iceberg. This one I haven't touched yet. I'll show you them all closer too. It's, I got it, I think, from MI Gardener, and as we go through the garden, I'll put as much as I can on the screen of the seeds that I bought, because some of the names I don't even know how to pronounce, and um, I'll just tell you what the real names are. I'll put a picture on the screen. It'll be a lot easier that way. This is um, a lettuce that according to the package, it's supposed to, I think it's like a four season. It's supposed to like go through the summer. So it, it's just really coming into its full size now. And if I find it is going to struggle a little bit, there is a part of the garden that gets a bit of shade in the afternoon. I can easily just move the grow bag over there. But I was just kind of keeping the lettuces all together. But we've been really enjoying this. And this is all just different kinds. I don't even remember. I just kept mixing all different ones. Two of the things I had to reseed. But isn't it pretty? There's the tower. I mean, it's almost decoration. It's just so pretty. Who knew lettuce could be so pretty? And these are the other two. And I'm really excited to try this one. I really hope it tastes good. I can't imagine it not, but. We planted these potatoes with you, I guess about three, four weeks ago and they've all come up. There's two that are a little bit later. This part was chiefed in red and the rest are all Yukon gold, but they're, hello, 
but there isn't one that hasn't popped up yet. And this is our first planting. We have them over here and along the back of the in-ground garden, but they were planted much, much later. So I'm hoping they're gonna do okay, but so far, so good. And the chickens line up along the fence because they get very jealous that the straws here, that's their favorite thing to play with. You know, I, I'm trying to run ahead with the camera so you guys can see him run and follow, but he's literally attached to my feet. So when I run ahead, so does he. So the majority of the brassicas are doing really, really well. There's quite a few broccoli heads. I really don't see any cauliflower yet. Some of the cabbages are forming heads. I have green magic broccoli, calabrese broccoli, uh, early Jersey cabbage, Copenhagen, amazing cauliflower and the purple Sicily cauliflower. And I'm trying just for fun. And there are two here and I think there's one more. I think I got it from Baker Creek and I'll put that up. It's a giant cabbage and it has a really funny name, so I'm not even gonna to begin to pronounce it. And they're there. But because the temperatures are gonna get so bad this week, I have a feeling this just might turn into a disaster because it's gonna be five or six days of in the 40 Celsius in the hundreds Fahrenheit weather. So, and I wanna show you something interesting too as we go along but I'll show you the plants. They're doing really, really well. And I just hope they, they make it through this and they have the netting on, but oh, and the Brussels sprouts, they're doing great. And I don't even have them covered, no bug damage, but I've never grown them before. Like when do they start getting tall? I know they're supposed to get tall. Um, they're healthy, they're bushy, but they're growing out. Aren't they supposed to get tall? I don't know. They're looking good. And I know they form the Brussels sprouts on each of the stems, but I don't see them getting up yet. But, all right, I'm going to show you them close up. So here they are. They're beautiful, healthy plants. And here's a little broccoli. And another little broccoli down there and here. And see the, the cabbages here didn't get very big and I'll show you why in a minute. But the plants are doing really well. But this is one of the purple cauliflowers. No sign of cauliflower there or on the, this would be an amazing cauliflower. And nothing there either. The only thing that's really showing signs is broccoli. And they could have gone a bit earlier than they were planted, but that didn't happen. See, there's a beautiful broccoli, but it just has to get bigger. There's a nice cabbage there. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but See the plants on the left, how tall they are? And then as you get to the middle, they're smaller. And then when you get to the right, they start to get bigger again. See? I'll show you my theory and I'm pretty sure it's accurate. This is our third summer here. And I can't imagine in such a short time this happened, but this big tree here, I think is the culprit because our first summer here, I grew the brassicas all along here and they were all as big as the ones you see on the end. In two summers plus, it, the sun by like two or three in the afternoon, I guess, is enough to shade. It's grown that much that it shades the middle plants and they don't get as big. That's the only thing I can think of because I know for the very first summer, they were all the same size. They all got big. And now it's just these ones in the middle. 
So I'm going to keep that in mind when we go to build the raised beds. I'll either avoid this spot altogether or make sure something goes there, maybe just flowers or something, because it, it's really affecting. I don't find the broccoli so much, but the cabbages that are there are just forming really little heads. So the few hours less of sunlight, it's just maybe two hours they're getting less and it really seems to affect the size. I apologize, I'm not one of those people that can walk with the camera and show you like video that way. I have to either stand still and hold the camera or put it on a tripod. So you're gonna get me standing talking and then close-ups because I just, I shake too much and I just can't hold the camera and walk at the same time. So I figured we do a row or two in the in-ground garden and then a box or two just to mix it up. So here, just onions. These ones I put as starts, like sets. They were just little bulbs. I have some others in another garden that were from seed, but they went in really late. And I have to do long day onions, so I'm not sure how they're going to do, but we'll give them a try. So this is just kind of a mishmash, and I'll put a card up here, this side, because last year, if you were with us, we had a big squash problem, and it wasn't bugs, but all our squashes did really weird things in the in-ground garden. And this year, I'm hedging all my bets. I, I know I'm repeating myself. I said that in my squash video. So anything I planted in the in-ground garden, I've put in a, one of them at least in some place in one of the beds. And I even had other plants that I've planted in the compost. So hopefully this year we will get, it's not just pumpkins, it's like squash, spaghetti squash, uh, Blue Hubbard, Honey Boat. I've grown so many different kinds and we didn't get any harvest at all last year. So I'm hoping by growing them in different ways, we will get something this year. So here I have a honey boat. At the very end, I put a watermelon here. I think this one is an early girl. I've put some kale. I can't eat it. I say I'm allergic, but I just get violently ill when I eat kale. Um, Frank's not fond of it, but we do grow it for the chickens. I have some somewhere else and they just love kale. I put some basil here because my herb garden's getting a little crowded. Oh yeah, I put a honeydew here. So that's the watermelon, the kale. I have red onions and Spanish onions. There, some basil. That's a very sad looking honeydew, basil, kale, and this looks to be a very healthy honey boat. I'm excited, I have never tried that before. Obviously this is my garlic and two rows or a row and a half at least is elephant garlic, which is my first time growing, and it didn't all come up. I ordered it from an organic, Canadian organic company last summer. They didn't ship it. I had to call them twice to ship it, and when they did, some of the, the seed garlic was big, some of it was teeny tiny. I was rather disappointed, because I'm sure you all know it's not cheap. So, there's many empty spots that didn't come up. But I've already harvested some garlic scapes from it, and I can see on my other garlic. My other garlic is just a hardneck variety. I don't know the name because for every year I just keep using my same garlic from the previous year to use, and it's just been so long I don't remember the name. But last year I did a soft neck too, and this year I didn't. I just did the elephant garlic and my hard neck variety, but... Oh, wow. Whoa! Oh, no. Oh. Sorry. 
Oh, see, he's always underfoot. Okay. Oh. Okay. He's playing in between the cucumbers. We're at the very back of the garden. If I didn't mention that, the blueberry plants are here. I have a whole bunch of potatoes along the fence line and I'll talk about them in a minute. I have market more uh, potatoes, <laughs> market more cucumbers here. And we just put like a trellis thing for them to grow on. It may shade out the potatoes a bit, but I don't know. You can tell when you're getting like tired of planting in that near the end. I said to Frank, just put something quick there. They'll grow up. I have cucumbers growing in other places as well. Last year was my worst ever cucumber harvest in my life. So I have cucumbers growing in several places, different varieties, because I want to make sure we have cucumbers this year. And way over there in the corner, I have a blue Hubbard growing there and another kale. And that's it for them. He's sleeping now under. Here are the cucumber plants. And it's kind of a messy corner, but back there I have a blue Hubbard and some marigolds and just the potatoes all along here. Sorry guys, I do have to sit from time to time. Here is my little watermelon patch and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven watermelon plants. Um, some are strawberry watermelon and the other variety is early girl. I think we did strawberry last year. We only ended up with one because of our squash issue. And I haven't tried early girls, so I'm hoping they're good. The plants look good and healthy. One didn't do well after transplanting, but I put a seed in and the seed came up and replaced it. So that was good. And I'll show you like the long pathways, but especially all through the squashes, there's either marigolds or zinnias, but the zinnias, they're only this big right now, but very soon they'll be blossoming. So by the next garden tour, or as I show you gardening videos in between, the flowers will come and it'll look a lot prettier. That's the part that I get excited about is all the flowers. So there's plenty of flowers planted. They're just not showing yet. So most of the watermelon, two of them are still quite small, but they do look good. And the watermelons are for me and the chickens. This one's even starting to vine off a bit, which is great. There's another one, another one, and there's two behind me. See these zinnias I planted earlier and they're really taking off now. I'm not going to show you every single squash plant because some of them are still small and they all look the same at this point. So there's zinnias in between. This one is a, I have two jack-o'-lantern pumpkins and then zinnias and then spaghetti squash. Yep, I couldn't remember for a second. And then honeydew. This is I have two honeydew there that are much healthier and then more flowers in between. And along here, it's mainly all flowers. I do have some kale, but I will show you the squash plants here because they're coming along much bigger. So these two are a blue Hubbard and look how well they're doing. They're nice and healthy. 
We're getting like little flowers in there. But check out this guy. I think, I don't, I honestly can't remember if this is a black beauty or a cocozel. It's a new squash, uh, zucchini I'm growing. Look at what's there. I don't even know if it's going to get pollinated because there's no other flowers, but I'm so happy. He was obviously planted first. I planted him when I did the tool video. So he got a head start from everybody else. Right beside the brassicas, though, I'm growing little bear and baby boo pumpkins. And they're just starting to branch out, too. And it's so hard when you're growing so many varieties of squashes to keep them all separate. But I'm doing what I can. And they're going to grow up the trellis this way. And they're looking really good too. So here's my herb garden. Those are chives. A huge lemon balm I keep cutting back. I have rosemary, basil, oregano, parsley, thyme, more basil, some sad looking marigolds in places, and at the very back are mini cucumbers, not pickling cucumbers, they're just mini cucumbers. And there are other flowers in here, they just haven't done much yet. And this is a really vintage little bird bath thing. Um, I'd like, I don't want it to look quite as vintage. I was thinking maybe some stainless steel. Oh, what am I saying? Stainless steel. Steel wool. Do you think steel wool would help get some of that rust off? I don't want to damage it, but I don't want it quite as rusty, I guess is the word. So here it is kind of further away. And we're going to move on to the beets. So here's the beets. It's right beside the herb bed. And can I just say that they're not my favorite thing to grow. They kind of stress me out. And nothing in the garden stresses me to grow except beets. First of all, I didn't have very good germination and I used some seeds from M.I. Gardner and some from Baker Creek. I'm growing two kinds and I'll put them on the screen. But I don't know, I have a hard time growing them. Even weeding, like, you know when you, like there's a weed close to the beet, but if you don't hold the beet down, you almost pull out the plant and some of them are already like wobbly it on top of the dirt. I'll show you in a minute what I mean, but I just find them stressful to grow. I don't know why, and we like eating them, and I really wanted this year to try pickling beets. I've never done that, so it's a so-so germination. I guess I'd say 75 percent, but some of them look really small. small. I fertilized. I've done everything, and I still have some thinning out to do, but then I'm scared because when you thin them out and you pull it, then you're um, disturbing the one that it's beside. And I have some of those onions that I started behind, but they're looking so-so. I am sitting amongst my green bean plants. This row here, which only goes a little bit of the way, because there's other stuff behind that I'll get to. These are cantera beans, they're green beans. And I repeat myself because they are just the best green beans. I don't use them for canning. I don't think they would hold up to the canning process because they're just so tender. 
but they are the best fresh eating green beans I have ever eaten. And they're doing really well. I use save seed from last year and there's only three holes that didn't pop up and I don't know why, but other than that, every single one came up and they're beautiful, healthy plants. Now this whole row right to the very end is the first part is strike. And after that, I think after the flower, yeah, after the Cosmo is provider and we like them. They're very good green beans. But what I like about them even more is they really hold up to the canning process. And this year we went through them like from my canning stock terribly, like we ate through them like crazy. So I'm going to grow all those. And as soon as the garlic is picked, I'm going to start another bed of green beans there because I don't want to be that dangerously low of green beans again. So all of this right to the end. And these guys give, if you've ever grown a strike or provider, you know that they are very good beans as far as giving, giving, giving. Sometimes I just can't keep up with the picking, but that's a nice problem to have. So all the way down is beans and my beautiful canter. So here's all the beans. That's a volunteer Cosmo. And then these three plants are Cinderella's pumpkins. And they have all kinds of good growth on them as well. And then these two, I think they're blue Hubbards. Oh, honey boats. These two are honey boats. And then we're back to the watermelons and the beans. And here are my pepper plants. There's two rows of peppers. Some are looking better than others and I'll explain that in just a second. But they go all the way back there. I think at the very end, at the very end, there's a zucchini. I'm going to see if I can remember. Are you having fun? You're very dirty. You're very dirty. Want to go have a drink of water? I'm going to see if I can remember all the names off by heart. I'm growing a couple of sweetie snack mix. They are so good. They're really sweet. Um, Frank, Frank's favorite is Cubanelle. I'm growing my favorite and lots of them at Varsky Roasting Peppers. Um, oh, these are new to me. Ozark Giant and Giant something else. I can't pronounce it and I can't even remember it offhand, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, I'm growing a couple of early jalapenos, Sugar Rush Peach, and maybe that's it. I'm not doing the hot peppers for me. I'm doing them for a friend. We don't eat hot peppers, but I love growing peppers. So any, the more variety I grow, the happier I am. But last year I grew too many different kinds of like fun peppers and we ate them, but it was a struggle to eat them all fresh. And some of them aren't good to freeze. Like the Ozark Giants and all of those will chop up and put in the freezer to use all year. The roasting peppers I can in olive oil and garlic and all that. And we're almost out of that because we use that all year. So the other ones that I grew last year, yes, they were fun to grow. They were pretty and all that, but they took up real estate in my garden and I grew too many of them. 
So this year I kind of went back to the basics as far as the peppers go. And I'm fine with that. Like that was fun last year. Plus some of those seeds get pretty pricey. So I'm, there's still quite a variety. I'm just kind of sticking more to like the bell pepper kind of thing. So that's fine because there's going to be plenty of them. And one of the ones, not the giant Ozark, the other giant I'm growing, I think I got it from Baker Creek. It, apparently the plant gets so big that you have to stake it. And the other thing I did this year is I usually, the past four or five years, I've topped my peppers. And I don't know if it really makes a difference because I don't have the longest growing season. I'm 5B, but you see the size of the plants that I don't know, by the time they catch up growing all their branches, I don't know if it really makes a difference. So I only topped half of each variety and I can tell which are topped and which aren't. And I'm gonna see what yields me more, topped or not topped. And also two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had temperatures like in the 30 Celsius, 90s Fahrenheit. Then a week ago, our temperatures dropped overnight to eight degrees Celsius, which is like high 40s Fahrenheit, which isn't what peppers and tomatoes like. And it did that for a couple of nights straight. So I kind of think it stunted these guys a little bit. They've put off flowers already, which I keep picking, but they, they're picking up now, but I think that cool weather kind of stunted them. And I'm very excited to see if the topping versus not topping yields a big difference because I don't know if it actually ever did. So time will tell. Not much to see in this bed at all. This is a carrot bed that I planted. Well, it's not even two weeks ago. This was my last bed to plant. And there's... This one seems to have good germination and there's about six varieties of carrots in here because I thought I was panicking. I was running out of seeds, so I just put in all kinds of different varieties. So it'll be fun when it comes time to pick. So here is the carrot bed that I just showed you. That was the last thing I planted and I'm having really good germination so I'm happy about that. And our strawberries, I can't tell you what a good harvest we've been having. Nothing to like make a jam or anything like that. But every day I come in with like, I don't know, a good cup, two cups worth out of just these plants. And I would have had more because in the fall, I planted all the runners all down there. But remember when the ki chickens had access to the garden? Well, they ruined them all. So I skipped a couple of feet and just put some of those onions that I started down there. But these guys are just delicious. Sometimes they don't make it into the house. If we're out here working, we just constantly eat them. But they're already sending out runners, so for sure I'm just going to keep planting. I think I'd even dedicate another bed to them. They're just so good. Hello. So we have all potatoes all along this fence line in the Ruth Stout method. And this is the first year I didn't buy potatoes from like a seed company. Last year I found the expensive ones I bought from the seed company didn't do any better than the ones that I bought from like a big box store. So this year we bought some, like the ones that I showed you previously, those were all from like, um, not even Home Depot. I can't even remember where we got them. But only up to about here is from the store. All the rest going that way are our own seed potatoes we kept from last year. I've never done that be so, before, so I hope it pays off where we won't have 
a really good harvest, but I can't see how it's not. I can already see like lumps where the straw is rising, so I'm hoping it's okay. So all along here are potatoes, and right down here I have pole beans, and they're looking really good too. Some of them are already starting to trellis up. See where the humps are? That's usually where a potato is going to come. Not so much this way, but so all down there. I hope it works. So those are the pole beans. And at one of the end of the rows of tomato, I just have two spaghetti squash down here. Just to try and keep everything separate. The tomatoes are doing amazing. They need a bit of clipping again, but other than that, they're doing fantastic. That's a yellow pear and a sun gold. Juliet's. And they're, I've been taking all the flowers off because I still want the plants to grow a bit more. Ace 55. German pinks, rugby's, and all on the other side are our paste tomatoes. And they're looking good all down here too. They're doing so good. I've already come along twice and cut off bottom branches. Twice I've come through and snipped off the flowers and suckers. So I have three cherry tomatoes, sun gold, yellow pear, and juliet, which are my favorite, like for salads and that. They're like a paste tomato, so there's not the excess juice to like your, make your salad wilty or anything. But they're a bit bigger than a cherry tomato. And for slicers, I'm trying Ace 55. I got that from M.I. Gardner. It's supposed to be a low acidic tomato. So I'm very excited to try that. And then I have Jetstar and German Pink, which is a dual purpose. It could be a slicer or a paste. And I don't think I've ever grown one under a pound. Like each one is gigantic. Quite a few last year I grew were over two pounds. And Ace 55 and German Pink are heirloom, so I can keep the seeds. And then for paste tomatoes, I'm trying Rugby for the first time. They're more like a Roma tomato. Then I have Opalka, Amish paste, and Salvaterra. And I think that's it. I always like to grow different varieties and multiples of each to cover all my bases, and I enjoy them all. So. I like their shapes, I like their taste, so, and that's it for the tomatoes. So beside the tomatoes are here, and along the fence here, I planted some cucumber. It's hard to see because you mostly see the marigolds. These are burpless cucumbers, and I'm one, two, three, four, four of them, and I put some zinnias here too. And they're doing well, they're almost ready, they're sending out their little tendrils there so they're going to climb up this fence and I forgot to show you over by the other potatoes I have another cucumber there too so I have them all over the place with my fingers crossed so this was the very first carrot bed I planted and I put a few parsnips in the front here I think one and a half rows and the germination wasn't great with them so I have gone back and filled in a few places and they took the full 21 days to germinate. They're really slow. But this was my carrot bed, or one of them. But I have to speak to my potato harvester because there's at least three potato volunteer potatoes. And I don't have the heart to cut them back. So they're growing alongside the carrots. They'll not, the carrots won't grow well, but I have a whole other bed. I can't, I find it hard to kill something when it's growing. So the carrots weren't real people yet. So they didn't have a chance. So the rest of the carrots here, the germination, I guess, was about 
75, 80%. I have to do a lot of thinning out there, but I guess it's an okay bed, but my potato harvester might get fired. These are little parsnips. They take forever to germinate. When the carrots look good, I just have to come in and thin them out. Here I did parsnips too, but the germination was really bad there. So I did some more about a week ago. Obviously they haven't come up yet. All here is celery and a blue Hubbard on the corner. And my celery's looking so good. I did all the things. It's super well fertilized. I'm watering it like crazy and I really spaced it out. So hopefully this year, no hollow celery. Well, feels good. What, what, what? You must be tired. Is it nap time? So I'm really hoping because last year was just such a bust. Look how healthy it looks. How can it not be good celery? And that blue Hubbard is looking amazing. Do you see what's here? Do you see all of this? Sweet potatoes that I grew. I can't believe it. And I actually still have a few in dirt that their roots weren't good enough. So we still have a bit of room by the other potatoes that I know it's late, but I'll still put them in. All of these sweet potatoes. So they're looking good so far. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to. And I just hope that they follow through with how good they've been all this time. I can't believe I, even if, I guess even if they don't grow me sweet potatoes, I'm already so happy I got them to this stage. There. That's one of the baby chickens. That's not such a baby anymore. Hey, Nikki. I have a few in a container here. They were smaller ones, so I just stuck them here. And the daikon radishes that I was growing from that little heat spell that we had, they all bolted. But I'm letting them go to seed, so hopefully I can save the seed from them and try again in the fall. We're back by the lettuce again, where the grow bags of lettuce were, because these are the cucumbers I forgot to show you. These are called dragon's egg. I think I got them at Baker Creek, because I didn't grow them last year. I grew them the, egg, the year before, and they literally look like a big egg. They're really, really good. And I don't know why I didn't grow them last year, but I want more cucumbers, so I'm growing them this year. They're not as advanced as the others because I just put them in about a week or two ago. But one, two, I only have four plants and marigolds and a zinnia around them, but they'll grow up this fence as well. So you're gonna, they're so fun to grow and look at. They look like the size of our goose's, our goose's eggs, that's what they look like. They're a very light color. They're not green, they're beige-ish. I figured I'd give you a view from the other end of the garden too. The sun's gone. It's still hot. That's it. All done. That's everything. So at least now, I know there's not a lot to look at right now. Everything's just green, 
but now when we do the next tour, you get to compare to what it looked like or you get to see it grow. So that was kind of the point. And maybe by then I'll have swept the floors better and it'll look a little bit prettier and the flowers will be blooming. But that's it. I got to get this little guy inside. He's been drinking water like crazy, but I think it's his nap time and probably mine too. So thanks so much for hanging out in the garden with me today. And until we're together again, take care.